Welcome to another episode of the Red Production Company podcast. I'm joined by Daniel O'Hara, who directed Blocks 1 and 3 of The Stranger, and we're going to talk about all things directing. So, Daniel, how did you get started with directing? What's been your kind of career path? Uh, well, I guess I got into, you know, got into the industry early, work, doing work experience, really, and stuff like that with, uh, with Zig and Zag, which some people might remember from, from The Big Breakfast. Um, so, uh, yeah, got, sort of got involved with their production company and worked my way up. Taught myself how to use a DV camera mm. and got work initially shooting DV camera and then uh, uh, in Dublin in sort of magazine shows and stuff yeah. on TV, like a football show and a travel show and stuff. This sort of notion of the DV director came about where, mm. where you're shooting and directing at the same time. So the first actual directing job I got was... Uh, um, doing the inserts for a Sunday night game show on RTE called It's a Family Affair, which was hosted by Dara O'Brien. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, which I don't think he <laughs> remembers particularly fondly. But um, uh, So that was sort of the fir first directing thing, got it to sort of magazine TV. And at the same time as that, I was writing scripts for short mm. films and, you know, trying to get, get those made. Eventually got did a couple of short films that did well, and won a few awards, and that led to getting a break uh, directing sort of episodes of TV drama. Mm, yeah. Um, so would you say doing short films is, is a really good way to kind of say, look, I want to be a director, here's my calling card almost? Definitely. I think uh, the, you, can, you can say you want to direct something, but no one's ever going to give you something to direct mm. if you've not done it before, and that's the, the, the challenge. So, you know, you either have to make friends with the writer or write something yourself. Yeah. And, and I think now the technology is there. It's so easy for people, you know, you can shoot stuff on a phone, you know, you can you cut on your computer, you know, you can stick it on YouTube. Mm. I think it's, it's so easy now for people to, to pull together the resources to actually, you know, come up with a finished product. And it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. You know, it's all, it's all a learning experience, but you, you learn so much by just doing it. Yeah, because I think there might be, I think some people have a misconception that to, to become a director, you do third AD, second AD, first AD, and then become a director. But, but would you say more so directing smaller scale content is a better way? Yeah, well, you know, both. I think experience, experience of the industry at work is very valuable. Uh, I didn't actually work on, you know, big sort of drama or film sets before I, I sort of was directing on them. So that's... You know, in a way, in a way, you come into it and you don't don't necessarily know a whole lot about the etiquette and about how th how things work. But uh, you know, you get the chance to shadow people or whatever. But um, so I think uh, there's not. I don't think there's. I don't think there's any single sort of career path mm. as such to direct. And I think it's something that if you want to do it, you got to just do it. Yes. Uh, all of those different things working in different departments is, you know, it's all valuable, mm -hmm. valuable experience. You're getting on set. You're opening your eyes. You're working with good people, learning from them. Um, so being a third or second or first or whatever is is all good and and you know people have gone that way to directing but um, yeah I think it's just sucking up that knowledge as much as you can and the experience yeah. and then but but just doing it. Mm -hmm. So I remember you you were talking on set with someone that was doing work experience shadowing you yeah um, about the balance between uh, kind of the technical aspect of directing and the more creative yeah. dealing with actors and then dealing with you know camera crew and lighting and everything. Yeah. Um, how do you think you get that balance right? Because I think some people say, oh no, I am a director that just deals with actors, or oh no, I'm a director that just deals with kind yeah of the technical side. Yeah, well, I think uh, honestly, I think I think to say I'm. A, I'm a director who just deals with actors. I'm a director who just deals with, you know, visuals or whatever. I think, I think, I think that limits what you can what you can do. Definitely, I think that the the job the job is across both. I think it's kind of, uh, you know, it's like the whole industry. It's sort of, it's a business based on sort of artistic or creative yeah. sort of endeavor, um, and those two don't always go together. Yeah. Um, and you know the challenge with, yeah, I guess with directing is you you want to you want to you want to sort of help create an environment where where your creative people, whether that's your you know your cameraman or your designer or your actors or whatever, can you know come up with the with great ideas mm -hmm. and, and where you can come up with great ideas and and create a relaxed sort of environment where nobody feels under pressure. Um, not nobody feels under pressure, but where 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 
people feel that freedom to, to sort of have those ideas and to be creative. Mm -hmm. The challenge is then that you're under a lot of pressure yes, and you've yeah. got to do this amount of scenes today and you've got to do this many pages today and you've got this much time to do this and we've got to be at this location at 12 mm. o'clock and you've got to, you know, we're, we're losing the light and what are you going to do? And you go, well, you want us to do five shots for this scene, but we're only going to get two. So which two shots are you going to do? Yeah. So so uh, it's, a, it's a non-stop sort of juggling act of... of being creative and being practical, and, yes, and they yeah. just they just go hand in hand. Mm. And I think, you know, certainly certainly we, you get better at that with experience and about knowing what to uh, what battles to pick and what you know what things to prioritise and when to sort of when when to stick to your guns and know mm. no we absolutely got to do it this way or when to go okay well we need to maybe be a bit flexible mm. in order to achieve this. Um, as I say, it comes with experience, but a huge part of it is is your prep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is what I want to go on yeah. to. The importance of pre-production, I think, especially for students, it's a it's a step that gets massively missed out. It's we'll turn up a location, which you know might be a friend's house or something, and we'll go cool. We kind of want a two shot and a couple of singles, and it'll be a bit of a yeah thrown together experience. But so, what would you say? Well, how important is pre-production, and how what are the kind of processes you need to go through in pre-production? Well, you know, obviously you, you're starting with a script and you start some, or, or, or sometimes you, you'll be involved before that, you know. Um, uh, there's a great example on, on The Stranger, actually, that for one of the later episodes, Danny Brockler said, he says, oh, I want to do a foot chase. Um, so, you know, we just started talking about locations that, mm. might, be, that might be good and he was going to have a little bit of a wander around, uh, you know, a, a, an area that he had in mind. But then we spoke to Mark O'Hanlon, the location manager, saying, Danny wants a foot chase, any cool locations off the top of your head or whatever. And this, um, this amazing location, which you'll see at the sort of, in the pre-titles bit of episode seven, um, sort of where, where that, that chase finishes up. Um, and that came from, uh, you know, an open creative conversation between the writer, director, the location mm. manager. Um, so that's, an example of being involved even before there is before the script or, or, yeah. or contributing to the script, but you have the script, uh, you got to start thinking practically about how you're going to achieve it, and that you know that comes down to everything you know day night, you know uh, you know are there stunts involved? How many actors are involved? A lot of the prep time for a director is spent driving around with the location manager, mm. finding the locations, um, and the different sort of stages of that is you know obviously. It's They'll show you pictures of, say, you know, five or six different options. You might go, or ten different options. You go, well, let's go see these couple, and you go see those, and then you decide on the one that's best. But then, what you want to you want to do is spend the time with the design, production designer, thinking about how you would, you know, make it work for your story. Mm -hmm. Then you want to walk it with your, uh, you know, your DP, your cinematographer, um, and think about think about where you're going to put the camera and and, you know, what you're going to do. And and really, what you're doing is eliminating all the things that you, that you can in, in terms of being taken by surprise on the day. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, your shooting time is limited. Yeah. And that's the reason why as much conversation as you can have beforehand, you should do. Mm -hmm. so, so if you can stand on a location with your cameraman and say, what if we put the camera here and it was on a dolly or a crane or whatever? And he might say, well, if we just put it there instead, that would mean we could do this or it would look good from this. Um, and it means we turn up on the day, he knows what to do, he talks to his team, you know, you're up and running, you have, yeah. you have an idea what to do. And for all the prep, and, and particularly then something like, uh, you know, again, we had quite a few st stunt set yeah. pieces on this, uh, and those need to be planned really well, obviously in terms of safety, but also, uh, also in terms of being able to achieve them well. You know, and and they talk to a stunt coordinator about here's what we want to do, what, what, here's what we want to achieve, and then the stunt coordinator will talk about uh, the best way to achieve yeah. that, or or you know, well, given the time that you have, maybe you should think about this and this. And for example, a couple of big fight sequences that we had in the in the last block of the last couple of episodes of The Stranger, you know, we spent time rehearsing, but both. Got the stunt coordinator some time at the location mm -hmm. with stunt doubles to you know we worked together to design the shape of 
you know, fights or sequences or whatever. Yeah. And then the actors would then have time once that had been worked out with stunt doubles and we'd, you know, we'd sort of, you know, I guess the process, I'd go with the stunt coordinator, talk about what I wanted to do. he then go with the stunt doubles, work it through, video some of that, show it to me or I could go along and then work that through with the actors. Yeah. Um, obviously, sit may they maybe save it a bit more for the day. But, um, but yeah, again, you're just eliminating the things that, you know, the things that could go wrong or the, or the things that... Uh, just eliminating wasting time talking about stuff yeah. when you can make those decisions in advance mm. and and the other key thing about all that actually is uh, is the communication and making sure that your crew know what you want to do yeah um, and again talking about prep that could be storyboards depending on the sequence it could be a shot list it could be you know could be simpler than that um, but that goes all the way back to to you know uh, color palette and things like that you know again on the, on the Stranger, uh, production designer Debbie Burton and costume designer Sharon Gill, very much, uh, you know, in communication together, you know, talking about uh, the colour palette that we wanted for this and, and the world that we set up. And, yeah. and, and, and that's, uh, you can see it, you know. The, what that does, again, your prep is sort of fueling your storytelling. Mm -hmm. and, and if we're consistent about all that, then it's supporting the storytelling that's yeah. on screen. And that's the that's the key thing is the storytelling. Yeah. Ultimately, um, yeah. I remember I went to the the Strangers Lair. Yeah. And that was such a, an amazing set. It looks yeah. really kind of spot on. Um, so you, you did talk quite a bit about locations. Is that something that's that's really really key in all of this? And yeah. and also not necessarily being stuck to the idea that the front of the house has to be the interior of the house and yeah yeah this well well it's you know actually that was finding adam's house was was quite tricky really because we had you know we had an idea of what we wanted and we wanted it we we decided we wanted sort of period period house but that had been modernized mm. you know that was sort of just to show the sort of the affluence and the and the, and the taste as well um so but then there's so much interaction with, you know, the trip family, mm. you know, whether they were next door or across the street or whatever. And there's lots of comings and goings at the front of the house. Yeah. So the balance, yeah, you just, and we looked at a few things and there was one stage where we talked about possibly having a different exterior to interior, but we decided there was too, there was too much uh, sort of threshold action mm -hmm. really and coming and going. We wanted to find the, find the one, one house that would do everything. So, you know, we did, we did in the end. Um, but yeah, that can be a that was a pretty extensive search of fancy houses in yeah. Manchester. Um, uh, but yeah, the loca I think the location is so so vital, you know, and and um, obviously your production design comes in on comes in on top yeah. of that um, to to sort of shape it into into exactly the the sort of look that you want. But um, but yeah, you're always just always trying to find interesting things. If it's a cafe, if it's a scene in a cafe, you know what's the most visually interesting cafe you can yeah. you can find, and and uh, or you know, and, and the same applies to whatever it is—a park, a school, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, you're always looking for something that's that's you know visually sort of interesting. Um, so yeah, so I think I think locations is a huge, um, huge part of it. Uh, I guess I guess it sort of goes hand in hand with the production design. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a key department. Yeah. Um, so you've you've done uh, mixtures of shooting whole shows, doing blocks of shows, mm. and just single episodes, haven't, yeah. haven't you? Um, what would you say are the differences between all of those? So if you're if you're, for example, just shooting one episode of, a, of a, an eight episode mm. series, um, do you find yourself do you kind of go in, do the job, get out, and have a lot less sort of say over the whole overarching feel, or compared to doing you know, yeah. being the lead director on a show. Well, well, I think yeah, it is, it is, it is different. But you, uh, you know, I think if you're coming into a show and doing a couple of episodes in the middle or whatever, mm. I think you have to respect what's been set up. Mm. You, you, of course, you want to come in and put your style on it and and do it your way and and put your stamp on it. But you, you know, uh, it would be sort of silly to think that you could. You would throw it all out. I mean, why are you doing that show if, yeah. if, if you know if you don't respect what what, mm -hmm. what has been set up, um, and and there is always a freedom within you know doing episodes. You know, one of, one of the first shows that I uh, I did that on was was Being Human, and 
being human had been go. I did the end of the third series, and really there was great freedom to kind of do do whatever you want. And the content of that show with vampires and werewolves and ghosts mm, lent yeah. itself to that. But but there was even though the show had a style within that style, there was a lot of freedom. I think that's the same across uh, across a lot of shows. They want directors to come in and do something. Mm, do mm. something. I mean, you're, that's the reason you're in there to do something that they, that, you know, that they've not sort of uh, not seen before. But but within the context of that show, yeah. Um, then and that's and that and I say that's just a different job, and you got to, you know, you, as I say, you respect the, the show that or the the style that mm. has been set up uh, already. When you're o- either opening a show or or doing a, a sort of mini series thing, I think you've got much more. Maybe the role of the director is a bit more similar to to on a feature film where uh, you're bringing, you know, you're setting up the style. Um, you know, what was great on The Stranger was to do the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, we have the ideas about, you know, well, obviously involving the casting, first of all, which is such a huge yeah. part of, yeah. of, of any show. Um, you know, finding the location, setting the look of it, both in terms of those locations and the production design and the costumes, and also then the the visual look in terms of uh, camera style and and and, and just the, the the overall look. Um, what was particularly nice on this was it's one thing setting up a show and doing the opening episodes yeah. that of a show that's designed to run and run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, you, you set something up. It, this is what the show looks like. This is the style of it, and it will it will evolve then over mm-hmm. hopefully many seasons. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, on a, on a mini series like this, what was really satisfying about the Stranger was all the things that we set up at the beginning. We could then follow through to the end yeah. and, and and sort of uh, f- finish those sort of things stylistically. Fi- mm-hmm. You know, finish them off the way we'd set it up. Um, yeah, which was you know, in, I, as I say, in terms of costume, in terms of you know, even even if you look at Adam's character and compare the way he looks at the end, you know, in episode eight to where what he did at the beginning of episode one, you know, um, and yeah, I guess to, to same to the stranger to an extent, but but uh, yeah, that's you know, that's as I say, the the, the creative satisfaction of, of seeing it through to the end. Yeah, great. so there's more more parallels when you're doing a whole mini series with yeah film director and can be a little bit more auteur about it ultimately it's a collaborative mm-hmm. it's a collaborative thing and we've you know there's you know you've got great people nicola richard harlan danny madonna all you know all involved and we're all we're all in it together yeah. but but uh but yes from in terms of so those visual things you're, you you know you're that's what you're bringing to the mm-hmm. table as a, as a director do you have any sort of particular processes that you've Put together over years which you would say you know these are my directing practices and these are things that i swear by almost like a little toolkit um i always i always have a little i always have a little notebook with me on mm-hmm, set mm-hmm. um and and it's got what i've got is i've got the episodes in and i got them in scene order because you shoot out a sequence so much yeah i can always look at that and i go oh where where were we just before this and where are we going after mm-hmm. this i think that's quite an important thing for taking a scene and thinking about you know, even if it's as simple as oh, the scene, this is the first scene of a new day. Yeah. So you might want to open that with a particular shot, mm. or it might be oh, this character just walked out a door. So that may affect how you want them to enter a scene. Mm. With actors, sometimes it's you know, again shooting out a sequence, they get entangled up and they go where where where's the last time you saw me? And you go oh well, it was you yeah know, yeah there. Um, so that's that's really helpful, and I've got little notes for each scene that. All through prep, I'll you know whether that is whether that is something sort of uh, you know an emotional note for an actor or a character, or whether it's you know a specific technical thing, or mm. you know it's oh remember to you know shoot towards the windows first because it's going to be the end of the day and the light's going to drop. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we, um, so I've all that stuff, and that's always that's always with me. That's sort of that's my safety blanket mm-hmm. on set. Um, uh, yeah, occasionally you see the fear in my eyes when I've, when I've put it down somewhere I can't can't remember where it is. In prep, uh, I've discovered a great new app. Okay, yeah. Uh, which which an art director had on a previous job, um, and and that just means you can take notes. You can have your script and you can take notes mm. and stuff uh, on your iPad, which is which is pretty cool. And you can add, stick in photographs and everything. Um, so yeah, that's an app called Scriptation, which is yeah, it's 
absolutely brilliant mm. for, for prep because it means then when you're looking at your script, you've got all your little notes yeah, yeah, beside yeah, yeah. the scene and you could have little reference pictures and stuff. Um, I, actually, I would start with a lot of reference pictures uh, and I would look at films and TV shows that, you know, or or f f photography or or paintings to an extent, but but I guess mainly sort of stills from mo from movies that that are relevant to 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 the world that you're trying to create and the story you're trying yeah, to tell yeah, yeah. and and sort of feed that in and just get your get your brain working. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, and then and then uh, again, it's uh, talking about again about balancing the practical and the balancing the practical and the technical or. Or also balancing the working with the actors yeah. and working with the visuals because they're two different sides of the creative yeah, yeah. thing as well. Again, it's about time management. Mm. You know, not all you won't spend a lot of time with all the actors beforehand, but the key actors who've got you know got big parts and got sort of key journeys, if you like. Yes, yeah. Spend a bit of time speaking to them, not necessarily rehearsing always. Mm. I don't. I don't. Um, I'm not sure on a TV schedule. I'm not sure if the value of rehearsals. I think varies. I think it's worth doing a little bit. Yeah. Um, for example, actually, where I think it's helpful is to sort of building relationships mm -hmm. that, when you arrive on screen, are meant to have existed for for longer. So on the Stranger, we had some really good time with uh, Adam and the two boys. So 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 Richard and Jacob and, and Misha uh, had a bit of time together. Yeah, yeah. Um, we did run a couple of scenes, uh, you know, to get everyone into the into the feel of, you know, the family and the the, yeah. the, the dynamics between them. Uh, we did a couple of sort of improvisation things, mm. which was good fun, and uh, and the three of them went off, had a day, went, went bowling for the evening. Yeah, so yeah, them working as a family. Yeah, yeah, so so that was really valuable. We did we did something. We did a little bit of time with, say, with also with Richard and uh, Anthony Head, because mm. because that was an interesting relationship. So you go so a father son relationship, but they're kind of estranged. Mm. So they needed to have a familiarity, but also there's a bit of a frostiness. So yeah. so again, we, we sat together. I sat together with them. We didn't rehearse scenes as mm. as such, but we certainly talked through the relationship, and so that they both understood where where they were going into it. Um, again, Richard and Sean had a bit of time together beforehand because they're supposed to have this relationship that you know they were pals for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely a big part of the of the of the prep stage. That that is that is very difficult actually to get sometimes if you're coming in for a middle block or mm -hmm. or, or something else because they're already shooting and it's hard to get people people together. So that's something that's really helpful at the beginning. Sim Sim Top and the first AD. Really get that that little triangle. The director, cinematographer, and first AD is is really vital in prep as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, from the first AD's point of view, that he knows what to expect going into it, and he knows what you know. This this scene may seem like a short scene, but they've got plans to do these elaborate yes, shots, yeah, so yeah. it's going to take longer. Yeah. Or this is a this is a long scene, but we're going to do it in steady cam one shot, so mm -hmm. it'll take a few rehearsals, but actually it won't take. Yes, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, so, and again, it's about the communication. It's about people, you know, it, it's no use at all being in the director's head, you know? Mm, There's mm. a crew of 100 people that all have to know what the, what the plan is. Um, yeah, and that, so, yeah, that's, I'm going round about way, you asked about my processes, but that's, that's, I guess that's the two things. That's spending time with the actors and then that, that little triangle of the DP and the, and the cinematographer, or the DP and the, and the AD. Yeah. Uh, that's if that if that little if that's a good triangle that mm. relationship at the start then then you know your shoot should go well yeah yeah you know? so do you think being personable and having really good strong relationships is that something that's absolutely vital to keep the whole thing going along yeah well it, you know i have to, i do i do think we're really lucky to be mm. to be doing this job and if you can't have fun doing this yeah, then there's yeah, something wrong yeah. with it you, the relationships is interesting because and again this it, it, it sort of only comes with experience in terms of working with the same people again, mm. um, I, yeah, it is. It is valuable work, you know, building those relationships and working with the same people again. Because, uh, and and it's not to say that things will always look the same or feel the same. You can do different styles and different type of things. But but it's definitely helpful. Uh, Simon Turner, who was first AD on this, I've worked with him quite a bit now, and he actually what where I found it really helpful on this show was. 
shot the first block and then went into post. Mm. So, so that I was at the tail end of post episodes one, two, and three yeah. while I was prepping episodes seven and eight. It was really, really valuable to have uh, a team around me who I completely trusted. Mm -hmm. So, if my prep time was limited, well, I had Peter Robertson, DP, and Simon Turner, AD, who who were you know, we we could have a very brief conversation and know what we wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they could crack on and Simon could schedule and that kind of thing. By the same token, uh, Steve Singleton was editing and he was brilliant and all the, all the post team were great. And uh, by the same token, I could go, right, we've got some notes to do on episode three. I'm off to recce locations for yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Steve would do the notes and I'd know when I came back, it, it'd, be, it'd be great and we'd just talk through a couple of mm. things. So... Yeah, building those relationships, and and again, that again, it comes back to the communication that 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 th those guys all understand what the intention is and what we're trying to achieve, um, and we're just all on board the same thing. I think that I think that's actually I think that's an important thing for for producers hiring directors as well yeah. that the directors on that that we all sort of see the show the same way. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes you hear sort of horror stories where where. Uh, a writer or producers have this show in mind and the director goes off trying to make mm. that show and it's just you know carnage yeah, yeah. But, um, but I think if, if if up front everyone goes right we see, we all see this the same way mm -hmm. great then everyone can just go and do it and everybody trusts each other that they're yeah, yeah, you know yeah. their judgement on the thing is, is no, no one's trying to pull it in a direction no, and, was, and, what, what's the point yeah ex that, definitely um, but if you don't I think Again, talking about going on going on shows where where it's up and running already, I think there's a balance because you'll want to do it the way you want to do it. Yeah. So I think you know what? Yeah, if you're coming in on a show and it's like it's a it's a it's a job, you go. This is the way they see it. I'll adapt my style and and yeah. and do it that way. That's okay. But really, you'll get more satisfaction out of it doing it the way you want to do it. So. That's why you want to you want everyone on the same page. Because you did you did uh, some of Doctor Who, didn't you? Yeah. Um, how was that? Because that is obviously one of the longest shows. Doctor of Who all was time. brilliant. Doctor Who was brilliant. The, it, it's funny, like because I think Doctor Who is amazing because you could you know one week you could be doing period drama, mm. and the next week you could be doing a complete visual effects fest. The next week it could be you know a claustrophobic thing all set in the TARDIS. Yeah. It, it, it's just there's. There's literally no limit to what, yeah, what yeah, you could yeah. be doing on it. Um, I, I, I had a great experience with Doctor Who. The shoot, the shoot was absolutely brilliant. The crew, are, the crew were brilliant. They loved the show. The crew were really proud of the mm. show. Um, and you know, you get to create this world. So I had a two-part show, and you get to create this world. You know, for these, for these, just for this one story. Um, and then where I guess where the the powers that be weigh in a little bit is in the edit and and uh Stephen Moffat and w would have kept a close sort of eye on that and on the storyline at that point and uh you know making sure it was in the it was doing what a Doctor Who, Doctor Who episode needed to yeah, do yeah. um so yeah it was interesting actually in ter uh, in terms of of that sort of executive producer uh, uh influence the shoot, you know, you were really let run free. Mm -hmm. The the edit then it was like, okay, let's make sure this is the this is a Doctor Who. This fits the, what we want to do, yeah. and then the sort of then after that the sort of you know score, grade, mix, visual effects. Then the sort of you it was there was more freedom again. Um, so it was it was a very satisfying experience. It was great. yeah, great, really really enjoyed it. So you still got to be across the post production completely, process. absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I think American shows are different in that way. I think American shows a lot of time have a show, have a showrunner who will oversee all that, and the director goes in, does his episode, does a little bit of a mm. uh, bit of an edit, and then the showrunner will see it will see it through to the end. Um, but again, that's just a different that's just a different way of working. That's, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's fine. Um, to finish off, have you got any kind of Little tips for anyone that wants to be a director: uh, be nice. Be nice. <laughs> you know. Uh, the, you know. That comes it, up a lot. It, it, should, it, it, it yeah. Listen, it should, this job should be fun, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people work really hard and work really long hours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, yeah, it just it, it 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 should be fun. It's it's a brilliant job, um, but yeah, that's. I think it's. I think being open to the, to both sides of it. I think. I think. 
and there's a there's a real balance as well between you, you got to listen to people, yeah. and there's you know you can you can always learn or get good ideas from the you know the different creative people around you, but you also have to stay true to the way you see it, mm-hmm. um, and that's that's a sort of interesting balance as well because you know it's not about it's not about being a dictator, it's about being clear about your ideas and then and then getting people to bring their contributions yeah. to that. Uh, you know, and and keeping keeping your vision for it clear in your head, and 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 you know, not not compromising on that. There's t- there's times where things have to change and adapt. Whether that's because, uh, whatever you know, you'll 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 have situations where, you know, different people will want to do things different ways, or you'll have things where, you know, the rain. Ruins the mm-hmm. ruins the scene. So you got to you got to be ready to to sort of think on your feet, and that and and that again is the is the benefit of the prep because the prep the prep will help you focus on what's important. Yeah. And and like I said, start if you if you go right, you wanted to do five shots, you've only got time for two. Uh, you go well from my prep. I know that this and this are the key elements of this mm. scene, so I'll make sure I get the close up of the keys. Yeah, but yeah. then I can do the rest of it mm-hmm. in one shot or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, yeah, so prioritizing the very very key moments and, and what, yeah. But again, it's it, 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 also it's it, the, the again back to the prep. It's the stuff you can have control over, you know. When you're on set with a hundred people and time is ticking, you don't have time to be figuring stuff out. You should, mm. you, you know, you need to figure it out before. So do you need quite a lot of self confidence as well then to uh, to. to, to to know that what you're doing is is the way to yeah, move forward. Yeah, and you know what? Again, that's experience. Uh, it, I think I think you gotta you just gotta trust your trust your instincts. I think I think if you you know your taste, your taste is is good, and you gotta trust your instincts. And again, this is where the this is where the prep helps you if you don't have experience mm. because you can you can remember that you made a decision about something in the cold light of day when you had time mm. and calmness and everything. You made this decision, so. Are you be careful before you throw that decision out in the heat of yeah, you know yeah, of yeah. the of the you know the crazy shoot. Um, but yeah, yeah, trust trust your instincts. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching the Red Production Company podcast. It's been absolutely wonderful to have Daniel O'Hara with me. We've got some really great insights from that, and uh, we're going to be having loads more fantastic content coming out soon. Keep watching. <laughs>